Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Today, we're actually going to take a break and focus on uh, a, a person who has run for office as a libertarian and, and actually won. So <laughs> that's always a, a good news to hear about. But, uh, um, uh, before we get into that, I'm going to introduce you to our panelists. Up in our left-hand corner, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite. Uh, last word in liberty, retired engineer from the state of California. And probably coming in later, our Screaming Eagle of Freedom is out there flying through the air right now, and he'll probably be coming in for a hot landing. But Tim Everett uh, will likely be dropping in in the middle of the show uh, as well. And then we have a special guest today, uh, <clears throat> Kalisha uh, Morrow. Um, and she has uh, she is a city council uh, woman in the... Uh, city of Hanford, California, and so she uh, ran in 2020 and won, and so we're, we'll hear a little bit about that from her, and my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. So let's uh, jump right into the um, interview then. <clears throat> so Kalish uh, ran in 2020, and uh, James, I don't know if we have a graphic there real quick where we could show uh, where roughly Hanford is. So it's it's sort of located in between Fresno and Bakersfield in the uh, middle of the uh, San Joaquin Valley. And, um, <clears throat> well, uh, 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 Kalish, you uh, want to tell us why you decided to run for office? Yeah, so this was my, my second run for for city council, actually. I ran back in 2016, and basically, you know, I, I ran for similar reasons. Back at that point, I had a small business in downtown, saw the all the red tape and the issues that myself and other businesses were having, and I got more involved with the local politics and more vocal and those kinds of things, decided to run when the seat opened up, and uh, got smacked. <laughs> it was my very first campaign. Uh, so the second run, you know, I, I was actually thinking about moving out of the state, actually. Um, but I was realizing that the the issues that make California an issue was <laughs> spreading out to the rest of the country. There was no running away for, from it. So, you know, I, I decided to stay and, and defend my home state the best way that I could. And, you know, knowing that I already had kind of a, a, a foothold, you know, a good possibility of being able to win a seat here and, and you know, affect change here in California and locally, um, decided to go for it. So but that's the gist of it. Well, that's a really hopeful story because, I mean, we, we've seen this trail of U-Hauls leaving California. <laughs> and certainly there's a different <laughs> Yeah, where, you know, it's a lot more expensive to get out than to get in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck you've been renting a U-Haul these days. <laughs> yeah. But so, it's, it's so you, news to hear that, yeah, that, you know, there's somebody like you who's sticking around to fight. So, uh, Leon, what, yeah. what are you going to ask? Yeah, I was going to say, so so you felt that the the California disease is spreading is spreading throughout the United States in, in, in numbers that, I uh, guess to the extent that you feel that it's best to stay here and fight rather than to, than to move? Yeah, I felt that, you know, we were looking at different places like maybe Nevada or something, but even that is turning more and more blue. They've been kind of, they've been purple, but they're turning more and more blue as people are leaving California. And, and the problem is, you know, and my husband and I were talking about it. He's like, well, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you move out of California? And then, then you know, at, at, vote to raise more taxes and stuff. And I'm like, well, it's not that simple, though. It's just every regulation that they end up voting in, then it costs extra money, that costs extra bureaucracy, then they end up raising your taxes just via that way. And yeah. and so, it, you know, it's not this direct correlation of, you know, Californians just want taxes. Some of them do, which is it's just mind boggling to me. But <laughs> but it is just these these regulations that that occur and it, it, it snowballs. And, you know, that's where we are right now. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I thought that would be a futile effort. And I would have hated to move, start all over, start a whole new life all over and and then find myself in the same predicament, you know, five, ten years down the line because it, it, it just got as bad as California. So you said um, you said a little while ago that you run you run a small business in downtown Hanford. Was you did the COVID did the COVID uh, um, affect you the COVID virus oh. and in terms of the lockdowns? Well, I actually I closed it up a couple of years ago, so it um, I, I guess that was fortuitous. I my heart just wasn't in it anymore. I had a small um, we would we would make handmade soaps and bath bombs, so skincare line and, and that kind of thing, and I loved it. I loved having a boutique and stuff, but 
my heart just wasn't in it. I was getting more and more involved with the local politics and that's where I would get really passionate. And, but if I would start to focus on that, the business would start to kind of fall apart. And again, like going back to the issues with California, yeah, it's expensive to have even just one employee, let alone the team that I needed. And I just saw the writing on the wall each year. Um, we've had it set to where we keep raising minimum wage um, almost, yeah, about a dollar each year. And it has just, it was just going to keep getting more and more expensive. So a couple years ago, I just decided to pull the plug on it and uh, went back to doing interior design just uh, via online and stuff. And, and then this past year took a whole sabbatical so I could focus on the campaign. Oh, okay. 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 It seems like yeah. of, uh, you could have kept the, uh, a business on soap stores and then talking Ooh. about how you're going to clean up politics, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, only, only Jason would think about that, believe me. Only Jason would think about that. <laughs> well, it's not enough. My, my, my campaign slogan ended up being a better tomorrow, a play on my last name. So, yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Hey, after 2020 and now going into 2021, if you don't think we need to clean things up, <laughs> this is getting pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, as far as uh, uh, running then, uh, can you tell us a little bit about, I guess, how you did? I mean, clearly you won. Was it um, was it a, a really challenging uh, race or was it something where you uh, – Yeah, well, I'll, I'll let you go on. Right. So when I ran back in 2016, there was about four of us that ran. Uh, one of them, the, the, the person who, who won, uh, who got first place, I ended up in fourth, but she got first place and she had been in the local politics, the school board, those kinds of things. She had been on city council a few years before that and been you know, mayor because we do a rotation of mayor and vice mayor amongst the council and stuff. So, you know, it served as mayor at one point. Um, basically just had a bunch of name recognition. She took four years off and then decided to come back. But she was, you know, in conversations with her, she was just like, I really didn't even expect to win. I just, you know, kind of wanted to get back into it. And I, she put out a few signs and she just won handily on name recognition. So, <laughs> which is really frustrating. I, I, you know, for the rest of us. It looks like we might be having a little bit of technical problems. Uh, yeah, it looks so. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> say hi, Shelly. <laughs> oh, it's so kind of messing up. I'm so sorry. My internet's just been like been crap this whole time. We 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 have had we, we have had similar problems. Believe me, we really have. We, it's 2021. Whatever we do on this show can't be more messed up than what's happening out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like it fixed itself, <laughs> but yeah. but yeah. So anyway, kind of pick it up where I left off there. But I, yeah, when I if I did, had, I knew that if I decided that I would run again in 2020, that I would get an early start, and it was something that really threw some people off because I, I we did our intent to run over a year out. Nobody ever does that because uh, we wanted to be able to start fundraising. And so everybody was pretty shocked because usually you just start your campaign like two or three months before before election and that's it. Um, but yeah. we got started and oh my God, thank God we got started early because we had no idea COVID would hit. And we already did a lot yeah. of fundraising you know, just like monthly donors and stuff. So um, yeah, going into it, uh, by the time I had a full papers, uh, we, we already had a good nest egg to just hit the ground running. Um, but yeah, no, she, she was definitely a difficult candidate to, uh, to run against, but with, you know, based on our name recognition and stuff, but we hit it hard and we, we actually ended up with about 12 or 13 points over her. So we think we did pretty well. Wow. That's pretty yeah. good. That's pretty good. Wow. So what was, so what was your, what, I mean, in terms of running, what was your main issue? What was the main issue that you were running on? It, my biggest thing was, you know, cutting the red tape, uh, looking at the business, re the regulations that's here, because we're known as being one of those uh, towns that's just one of the most difficult ones to work with. And okay. so looking at some of these, you know, tedious regulations and, uh, you know, seeing what we could do to, to roll that back. And then, you know, I had other people asking me, like, well, you're very focused on economics, but what are you going to do for, for the rest of us, you know, the in people who aren't involved in small business? And the way that I was able to explain it to them was, like, it does benefit you. If, if we have a strong business, if we have strong um, in, uh, sales tax revenues, 
that means more services for everybody else. And it means not raising taxes to cover those services. So, you know, that it's that, that whole, like, it, it, it benefits everybody for sure. Hmm. Uh, how, how difficult was it to make that message too? Because I know that's for libertarians, that's one of the toughest things is to try and connect with average people and explain to them, I guess, how a, a free market it really does benefit your life and, and your liberty. And, and a lot of people kind of, think that's just kind of like pro business and they, they don't quite get the connection, I guess. Yeah. And that's why I, I was appreciative that somebody posed that question for me so I could formulate it, you know, in a way that they, they understand that the benefit of it really does reach them on a smaller level or, you know, more, uh, you know, household to household type level. Uh, you know, things like uh, we've got this really great parkland over here that everybody wants to see developed, but, we, you know, we can't really do that if we don't have the, the tax revenue. Uh, most of our most of our income for the city comes from sales tax and property tax. So as those all those things go up, you know, again, just going back to the whole thing, like everybody benefits from, from that kind of revenue. And so when you get and, and that's definitely something that us libertarians have to work on, you know, making it so it's um, palpable, palatable for for everybody else that does speak economic ease like we do. Yes, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if, if you guys make this distinction, but I make a this a big distinction between pro-business and pro the free enterprise system. I really do. Because one of them is really a special interest. The other one is really the one that promotes liberty, which is the free enterprise system. And that is the one that I support. So, but just to make that distinction, but anyway, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well, one of the things I was curious about, uh, Kalish, too, is, uh, um, Yes, as far as running for office, so it sounded like um, the COVID came up and kind of surprised everybody this year, I suppose, who was running for office. Um, how did that, since you ran in 2016 pre-COVID, and now you have this experience of running, you know, with the whole COVID lockdown thing, how did that change things for you? I I was worried that would change things a lot. Uh, obviously, it thwarted it you know, big fundraiser type activities that we were planning on doing, but we were able to still make up for that with the, again, with us starting early and, um, you know, reaching out to donors. And uh, we actually got a lot of help too from, you know, like the Mises Caucus, they donated quite a bit to my campaign and then you know, working with the local developers too, who just really appreciated my message of, you know, free market, those kinds of things. So, um, so yeah, it, it definitely affected us trying to do, um, and I'm sorry, are you getting any kind of feedback? Because I get it in my ears. A little bit, it's a little bit, but, um, but I'm here, I'm hearing you clearly, but I'm getting a little feedback. Yes. Okay. I think I'm going to, I'm going to turn it off real quick. Sorry. About okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and I can't hear you. Oh no. What did I do? <laughs> I uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, no, you're, you're, turn you're, back you're, on. Never mind. I'm so sorry. Right in the middle of the show. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's, the audio is pretty good for the most part. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's fine as it is, but um, there is a little feedback. But I think you could go with as it, as it is. Yeah. The only thing that really hurts a politician is that hot mic when they don't know about it. So <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. So I can hear you guys a little bit, but it's not. I, I totally screwed this all up. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm a mess. <laughs> well, are you hearing us? Are you hearing us now? Are you hearing us? I can hear you very, very lightly. Uh, it's coming through my phone, but it's. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we will try to uh, to muddle through as best we can. <laughs> so. Um, but I mean, I'm just like, gonna get really close so that I can kind of hear you guys. Okay. 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 Uh, well, you know, one of the things I was curious about is uh, in running as a libertarian, what resources were available to you as far as with the Libertarian Party locally or statewide? Uh, you know, I mean, if, if somebody wanted to, it was watching this video, what, what you know, what might you be able to point them to if they wanted to consider, you know, helping out their local community and running as a libertarian also? I mean, you can always reach out to your local affiliate, uh, your, your, yeah, your local affiliate. Um, I got a lot of, uh, you know, in your state party and to, uh, that kind of thing, too. I would say, though, each state is a little bit different. California, we've 
we focused a lot more this year on making sure that they were helping out with our local candidates, which is probably why we ended up with the most wins out of ever and, and quite by quite a bit, um, you know, compared to the other states, because we all focused on lower, low, low ballot um, elections. And so, so there was that uh, national did help out with our walk app. Uh, it was basically like a, it's a canvassing app. So it, it took all the voter registration info and um, you know, put it into this app. And then we were able to see everything like as a map and answer surveys through that and, you know, get quick information versus, you know, the, the way that most people do it around here is they, they print up an Excel sheet of everything and then like, make little notes and cross things off. And this made it to where that we could go out there with a team and organize, okay, you're going to go hit this area and you're going to hit this area. And we, we could literally meet up, but we would never hit the same household because we could see where other people had been on the app. So, wow. you know, that, that was definitely helpful. And then again, with having our, uh, you know, some of the caucuses, Mises has been doing really great with wanting to focus on helping uh, down down ticket candidates, you know, knowing that that's where we're going to get most of our wins and stuff. So, you know, that was a huge reason. And just, you know, just having a network, my money, uh, most of the fundraising came from the Libertarian Party and, in you know, various ways, uh, small donations, those kinds of things. Okay. So is, is Hanford, is, is Hanford, in terms of its tra tra traditionally, is it primarily a blue a blue area or, or red area or, or purple? Hey, Tim. It's, it's hey, Tim. A, well, yes, sorry to interrupt you, the audience here. We just had our other panelists. Uh, Tim, our skewering eagle of freedom just came in for a hot landing here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty hot, uh, pretty hot. And... Uh, so I decided, uh, heck with that, I'm so late, I'll just do it from the cockpit of the uh, Screaming Eagles uh, aircraft here okay. at Imperial Airport. Well, that makes it really exciting. Uh, Tim, just to let you know where we're at, uh, Kalish was just telling us about some of the help that she's gotten from the Libertarian Party in running for and winning a uh, city council seat in Hanford, California. So I, I don't know, sorry, sorry to interrupt you there, Kalish, but did you want to uh, jump jump back to where you were going? I, we didn't mean to uh, cut you off there. Yeah, so, no, sorry no about worries. That. Hi, Tim. Sorry about Welcome. That. Hi, uh, yeah. hi, Kalish. I'm, I'm, you know, every everybody should talk to people with these little name plates on there, especially new people, so you don't, you don't forget their name, you know? You can just look at, you know, it's like... I mean, I'm not proposing that we all just stop communicating face to face and require a little memory uh, going on here. But, you know, you meet somebody new and you can't remember their name. And it's kind of nice just to see, oh, there it is. Oh, it's spelled with a K. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. And that could be a platform for running for office. You know, you could say everybody should have a name attached. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Mandatory right. name tags. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Right. I kind of had a meetup well, meet group, you know? Uh, yeah. A meetup group. Well, they, you they're, talking about, they're talking about mandatory masks, so I guess this mandatory name might be. Might be <laughs> <laughs> I know. I can't, I can't <laughs> recognize you. I mean, you know, a mandatory go. number instead of a name yeah. tag. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I was asking, I was asking about, the, about the area in which you were running. Were you running in a, is Hanford traditionally? Blue, red, purple. It's a, yeah, we're 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 very red county and uh, red city in my district. And you know, we break it up into districts too. And so there are some that are more Democrat, but mine is more heavy on uh, on the Republican. And I feel like that's a little bit of the feather in my cap too, because I was able to unseat a uh, you know a Republican incumbent with a ton of name recognition. I was able to unseat her as a libertarian. And, and it, you know, it's more as that we've got some people, other Republicans are in the area and they, it's so funny because they're very proud about, hey, you know what, if I'm a libertarian, I'm a libertarian, you know, at heart. Like, yeah. I'm like, you do realize you can just change. You, you, you don't have to be that, that party. You can actually literally be it's very simple yeah. but some of these uh some of these guys that uh, you know they're elected into office even though it's local office and they're nonpartisan and stuff they still know that you know that people find out what your party affiliation is and so they get afraid to go and change and be anything else um, 
you know, I just showed to prove them wrong. So hopefully we can get more and more people switching over to libertarian. In fact, uh, he was a vice mayor at the time. He endorsed me here in Hanford and now he's mayor, but he, as soon as I won, he switched to libertarian and he's a dues paying member. Oh, good. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Please, I had a quick question for you now because you brought up this uh, idea that there's, uh, you know, some Republicans and, you know, hey, maybe they could just switch over to being libertarian. Maybe they're really libertarian. What, what was it that uh, first got you to become a libertarian? Did you, uh, you know, is that early on in life or was it more recently with your uh, running a business experience? Uh, you know, what kind of, uh, what was the, the trigger, I guess? Yeah, it was, it was several years back. Uh, it was the last time uh, Ron Paul was trying to run for the Republican ticket. And he was the only one that really made any sense to me. And, and by the way, I was, I was registered Democrat at the time, but he was the only one that made any sense to me, which I thought was really crazy because, you know, he's, he's a Republican. And um, then everybody, everybody kept calling him a libertarian. And I was like, what, what is that? And I went and looked it up. And I think it was a, I can't remember his ad election, but um, but not too long after that, I, I realized that the Democrats had just completely failed us. And I, I was looking for a new home. Republicans weren't going to be the home for me because I'm I'm too socially accepting for for them and went for libertarian because, uh, you know, everything about our platform just hit it hit, hit all the marks for me. So that that was that was the moment for me. Oh, good. OK, good. OK. Okay. Well, I, I'm a small, I'm a smaller libertarian, not, not, not a member of the libertarian party, smaller libertarian. Jason, Jason wants to beat me up for that, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it, for a lot of people, it's not so simple because you wind up, you know, never learning about any of this stuff in school. I mean, you only learn about right. the Republicans and the Democrats. And yes. it's, but for me, it was just sort of like I didn't find out about even like free to choose or Milton Friedman until I was in my 30s, you know. So it was just, it's uh, it's a really, uh, and and I know a lot of people take a different route there, and and so, but it's always interesting to hear, especially somebody who's who's actually out there making a difference in office, you know, how how it is that they came around, type of thing. Yeah. So. Well, I, I told you guys, I was a social democrat when I came to America, so here I am, 44 years later. Uh, God, God, God save me. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he saved us from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, okay, we, Tim. Thanks for that. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you're you're dangerous, uh, uh, but you know, just being a libertarian because you're you're so good at talking that I would hate to have to, um, you know, go up against you as, as some kind of a liberal. I mean, you're, you're so smart. I don't know if I could compete. Well, uh, I guess I'll have to take that. I'll have to take that as a compliment. Okay. Yeah, I would. <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> so, uh, Kalish, you know, a lot of us uh, learned about libertarianism from various uh, people, or uh, in in a lot of cases, at least in my case, websites like Mises. dot org and things. Uh, and, and you mentioned Ron Paul, and a lot of a lot of us uh, have stumbled upon. Ron Paul, either early or mid-term, midway in our uh, development as libertarians. So, um, it, besides Ron, is there any other source of information about libertarianism that has influenced you over the years? Well, I know that obviously going and uh, researching the website was my biggest, my first big step on that. Um, I think it's also just having gotten involved with the with the party the way that I have and having those conversations with people have really helped answer some questions. You know, when I first heard Gary Johnson saying like, well, we should do open borders and those kinds of things or, or you know, just uh, speed, expedite immigration. At first, I was just like, what are you talking about? That's crazy. But then he starts explaining you see, then you make it so that they can work legally. And then, you know, the benefit is that you collect income tax off of them too. So now they're contributing to society and, you know, not, you know, taking advantage of things like everybody says that they do, which, you know, most people don't realize that if you're illegal, you don't 
get to qualify for welfare like everybody assumes but um but yeah it's just it, it was really just having conversations with people that really helped um help me understand our philosophies a lot more um and then uh, then I did start reading up on some more economics uh, books and, you know, getting some of the books and everything too, that may help make it even more sense. You know, I recommend the economics in one lesson, you know, that, that's a classic and you just yeah. listen to it on audio and you can get through it pretty quickly and it all makes sense. And it was written forever ago and it's still relevant today. And it, it kind of yeah. highlights why we've gotten into the issues that we've gotten into. Um, you know, it's almost like a prediction and stuff, but you know, information has been out there, but we still keep screwing it all up. <laughs> Yes. Well, being a, a libertarian in politics now, what, what's the most important issue for you going forward? Well, I think right now, you know, taking it case by case, we're dealing with COVID, obviously. Um, in my city particularly, we've actually still been doing well with our finances. And we were also, you know, when I got into office, I'm lucky too that everybody had been pretty good fiscal hawk so we don't have any debt or anything um we uh we have a couple of big box stores here that have been helping out with generating the revenue that we need to keep moving forward even though our small businesses are struggling unfortunately um so but you know that said even though that we're doing well our businesses are again you know they're struggling we've got people that employ that are employed by them that are struggling and so uh, you know the next thing i got sworn in on the 15th i i was happy to get unanimous support from the rest of council we agendize a, a discussion on basically declaring all businesses essential at the next meeting um i'm hopeful i think you know very positive that that's going to move forward and, and it's mostly ceremonial but it's just to encourage businesses let them know in a we've had a whisper campaign we've let them know that we're not going to enforce anything as a city or even as a county too uh, but they still have to deal with state regulations abc laws you know that those kinds of things so um but we're we're making a very public statement that hey if you choose to open up we're not we're not going to touch you we're going to leave you alone we're going to let you do what you need to do so uh, for those things moving forward, um, and then, no, I think, you know, I think that, taking a look at what we could do to incentivize new businesses. Oh, sorry, what? You know, I really, from, from a government official, I think that's really a good thing to do, that all businesses are essential. This is true, because these are, this is people's livelihood we are talking about. And some, some bureaucrat could sit somewhere and say, this is essential and this is not. This is one of the most egregious violation of our rights you could think about. But yeah, I, I like that. Like declaring all businesses essential. I like that. I really do. And it's absolutely essential that that message get out to the rest of the California as well and the other California politicians. But it's also essential that we've come to the end of our show and so we want to wrap up. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, Khalid, for uh, being here and sharing your experience with everybody today. This is really important. I mean, if we're going to make changes, it's got to be, you know, at a lot of these local levels just to get people on board with liberty and, and, you know, uh, how that affects our lives. Uh, so, uh, if you uh, have any comments or questions, uh, yeah, you can feel free to send them in at counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. You can catch this show archived uh, at uh, libertariancounterpoint.com uh, or Facebook at libertariancounterpoint.com.